Hey everyone, welcome back. Happy Tuesday to you all. And thanks so much for coming to watch this video. And we got uh, nine days left until having events. We're getting very, very close, which is a good sign there. Uh, sorry for the late post. My boys are now in soccer again. So obviously I want to be there for them when they practice, when they play games. That means I have to do my research and everything else later on in the day towards evening, like right around, right around uh, seven o'clock or something like that. But the time I'm done with that, recording a video, uploading a video, it's going to be late. Um, so there's a reason why I'm probably going to be getting rid of some of the minors that I cover, and we'll get into that here in the video as well as the reasons for that and why I'm also doing that. Uh, but we'll also take a look at the institution side of things as far as for the minors over the last six months and the last month as well. How has that changed, right? How have the institutions been buying into them or selling out of the minors? What those changes have been? Um, it's always good to take a look at those things as well. Uh, and that's pretty much it. So we'll take a look at Bitcoin and Bitcoin miners here first. But as always, you guys know the drill here. This is not financial advice. Right for entertainment only, please do your own research and I'm investing in the following coins and companies for full disclosure. And if you enjoy this type of content, hit the like button, subscribe, <laughs> helps me out tremendously. All right, also corrections will be posted to Discord, YouTube, and Twitter. Uh, you guys are aware of that. And let's get into Bitcoin, see what's going on there really quick. Uh, so Bitcoin obviously pulled back all the gains that we had from yesterday, from Monday. Uh, we're back down to 69,000. I mean, that seems like the kind of... A line in the sand right now a little bit as far as we get closer to the having event uh but we'll see how things go right we knew it was going to be volatile going forward uh the having event obviously is going to be a major event here for us we do have the spot bitcoin etfs which are also uh, going to be attributing to potential future gains in bitcoin and the miners going forward so i think this is just uh you know a little bump in the road or many bumps in the road until we get past the having event uh, at that point i believe things will kind of get better right that's at least the theory here We'll see if things will work out that way. We have a different cycle than we have in the past, but that's why we're saying we'll see what happens. But I think it will go up in price after that. Uh, as far as the miners were concerned today, uh, they were all pretty much done except for three, it looks like. Uh, DG, DG, uh, Digihost was up 1.43% today. Mara was up just 0.17% on the day. And then Stronghold was up 1.69% as well. And everybody else was pretty much in the red here. Um, kind of like we had uh, yesterday as well, which was kind of surprising with Bitcoin going up. Okay, but that's kind of what we have there. We'll continue to monitor it, see how it goes. And yeah, let's get into the things that we want to talk about here. So I did a poll today on uh, Twitter and on Patreon, actually, uh, which was actually a link to a Google Forms, I guess you could say, a poll where you could do surveys and things like that. And I just wanted to get some insight as far as where everybody is on their investments, kind of like... Uh, what is the uh, popular stocks that are out there? Which ones are not so popular? Just to kind of help me out, see if where I need to maybe spend a little bit more time on doing research on some of the more popular stocks, right? And maybe not as much research on some of the less popular stocks. So that goes to kind of hand in hand with me trying to save some time uh, with all the research that I do on here and still have obviously time for family and everything else, right? Trying to balance that a little bit better um, and the winter time wasn't as bad because there wasn't much really you could do outside. But now the summer's coming again. We got spring, summer, and obviously want to spend time with the family outside and things like that. So I need to basically cut some fat here. And uh, this is kind of the way I was looking at it with this uh, survey here. Okay, so this is the Twitter survey. This was the same survey that I did with Patreon members. Uh, but I just wanted to see if there's any major differences between what the general public right that's out there uh and this could still be an echo chamber that i'm kind of looking at as far as the data is concerned right uh we all kind of communicate in the same kind of circles here as far as the bitcoin miners and things like that and that was one of my concerns is being in an echo chamber and i don't think that's the case here i think we have a large selection of uh, miners and different uh responses on everything here so we're just going to go through this. So I'll point a couple of things out here. And with Twitter getting 373 responses, we'll go use that data here. I also have the data from Patreon here that I can take a look at for my members to see where they're looking at as well. Uh, but overall, the big thing that I'm seeing here is whether it's through Patreon or through Twitter, uh, I'm seeing obviously a large uh, interest in like BitFarm, Cypher, CleanSpark, Iron, Marathon, Riot, TerraWolf, Right, those are kind of the ones that are having the most interest around them. Uh, you can see it here as well, right? CleanSpark through Twitter responses, 71% um, of the responses, respondents uh, stated they own currently CleanSpark. So which miners are you currently invested in, right? So that's the 
biggest one here. And then we have obviously, I was surprised by this, Bitfarms. Bitfarms was 57.6% of the respondents said that. I thought it was going to be actually Marathon, right? Uh, based on the things that I've been hearing and reading and things like that, it seemed like Marathon had maybe a larger following. But based on at least responses that I got from, it looks like Bitfarms actually has more. And it might be because Bitfarms is a little bit maybe more undervalued potentially. Well, or quite a bit more undervalued than Marathon is. So maybe that's why people are getting into bid farms for that upside potential there. And then you get uh, Iron, right? And uh, Marathon being pretty close there. And you got Cypher as well, right? 36% there. You got Riot at 26 and Terrell at 30%. So those are obviously the leading uh, stocks that people are interested in. And then you got like Bid Digital at 10% here. You got uh, Hive at 8.8, Hot, uh, Hot 8 at 11.3, right? And then I asked the next question was, which miners are you currently looking to invest in within the next eight weeks? And we got pretty s close results as we saw up top. So we got CleanSpark again, number one here. Bitfarms number two, right? Yep. And then we got Iron at 37, followed by Cypher. Then we go down to possibly Marathon, TerraWolf, and then Riot, right? So we're seeing that the smaller miners like Argo, uh, which other one here? Digihost, DMG are not getting as much attention. Uh, Mawson, same thing. Sphere, 3D, Stronghold, right? And then we've also had the Griffin community come out and vote here quite tremendously here, uh, trying to help out Griffin, uh, which was kind of cool to see. But they were obviously very vocal here, trying to be. Uh, it's still a very small percentage of that. If I add it all up, I think it was like 13 or 14 total or something like that. Respondents had Griffin in there. And we had some Saluna as well in here as well. Greenage. Greenage I used to cover a long time ago. But based on this, and then the next question that, which I posted here, which was, which miners should I drop from my research? Uh, we got a pretty strong response for, obviously, Argo, 50%. Mawson, 50% also. Sphere 3D, 50%, right? These are the guys that are not growing that much or at all, really, going into the having event. They're going to be under 5x a hash, uh, you know, at the having event and even into later on this year. So there's just not that much interest for them. Then we also have, obviously, here, who else was there? That was kind of low on the, or high on the, uh, did you host DMG as well, right? Smaller miners again. And who else do we have here? I think that was it out of the, those. So we got Argo, did you host DMG, Mawson, Stronghold, and Sphere 3D are going to be on the chopping block. Um, and the reason for that is, is just to save time, right? I've also noticed that on the videos that I do for YouTube, whatever I, um, the way I tried to do it was if I had one of the smaller miners, I try to put it in with some of the bigger miners so that would get some views at least, because if I do it separately with just smaller miners, the view count is uh, very, very much, much smaller than what I normally get, right? So I can see it in that alone that it doesn't uh, warrant a lot of my, in, time research spent on this and i think with having more time i can do other things with the other miners that i am covering right but the goal here is i'll probably keep track of them to see if the smaller guys here um, start to do well going into the future so i will have some rudimentary data on them just to um, keep track of them to see how they're doing but i won't be reporting anything major on them um, and maybe maybe if I have time or something like that, I will do like a video once a month on those guys and the smaller miners as far as how they're performing and things like that. Then we'll lump them all together and then we get maybe a little bit more uh, view counts based on that. Okay, so that's the plan going forward here. Um, the spreadsheets that I do have on these guys, I will take them out from there because when we do look at the spreadsheets, when I look at them here, I mean, you can see here that I cover approximately 18 miners. And with those, I'm basically getting uh, removing approximately what is it six i think it is one two three four five six yeah so pretty much a third of the miners would be uh, i would be removing from my research uh, or at least deep research on these i'll still like i said i'll keep track of them to see how they're doing and if they're making huge improvements and growing nicely then maybe i'll put them back in uh but yeah i mean you can see all the data points that i track on everything so if i can save a third of the time during the month on all of these things, I think I'll be in a much better position to be able to spend time with my family and enjoy the outdoors weather a little bit. Uh, but still, obviously, cover the main uh, mining companies here that obviously a lot of you guys are in, in, interested in, right? 
And then one of the questions that I had also on this form was, uh, which miners would you like me to add to my research? Uh, they must, however, report monthly operational updates. So you guys obviously had people coming in here for Gryphon, quite a few for Gryphon. Some people <laughs> had Bitforms, Micro, uh, CleanSpark as well, which I'm already covering. I'm trying to see if there's anything else in here that was in it. Um, Swan, yeah, but Swan's not public yet though. Uh, so if we do see some larger miners getting into the uh, public space when they're being uh, uh, sh uh, not shorted, uh, when the shares are public, right, you can buy them on exchanges and things like that, I may add those at that point. Uh, right now, I think we're only seeing maybe uh, Swan potentially later on this year is going to go public. Maybe we'll get some data on them. Uh, but you're seeing, uh, again, Sato here and then uh, Gryphon. Uh, a lot of Gryphon here to be added. So... You know, Gryphon is a small miner as well, uh, under one exahash right now. They are looking to grow, so we'll keep an eye on them, and we'll keep an eye on the other miners as well to see how they do, okay? So I hope you guys are okay with it. Uh, you know, it wasn't easy. It's, I've been covering those miners for a long time, but just recently seeing that they are not growing as much as the other miners, uh, especially going into the halving and after the halving event. Uh, if I saw at least a slimmer of hope that they're going to get to at least like five exahash or something like that by the end of the year, I would probably continue to hold on to them because I think at that point they would be uh, better performers going forward. But we are where we are right now, and it's obviously a challenge. I want to provide information, but I also don't want to waste my time. Okay, so that is it. If you guys have any questions, obviously hit me up in the comments and things like that. And like I said, maybe in time when they do start growing nicely, I may put it back in. All right, so that's it for that. Let's get into the... Uh, institutional updates here. So on this, I track, as you guys know, a lot of the institution's activity here over the last well, six months, basically. I, that's kind of what I track is at least six months of data on this for each miner. And we're looking at the number of institutions that are in each uh, miner, the number of shares that they own, percentage, uh, buy ratings, right? Strong buy ratings, buy ratings, uh, regular buy ratings, hold, underperform sell ratings, and then their price targets from high, average, and low. And then we're kind of looking at the stock prices of the companies 24 weeks ago to latest prices and the difference between that and price difference uh, percentage on it as well. Just to kind of see how things have progressed through that just to see if supposedly smart money, institutional money is going into the right companies uh, based on my metrics here that we're seeing. And then we'll just kind of take a look at all of the data that we do have here on it, okay? So I do have data for six months difference. So we're looking at basically this month uh, that they reported for um, March. We're going back six months to what that data was and we're comparing it. So the difference between that, we're seeing the difference in these figures here. Uh, month over month numbers here, we're seeing those over here as well. And let me see here. Uh, let me see if I, I think I might have forgotten to do this. I did, isn't that wonderful? Okay, so what we'll do is maybe we'll pause the video here uh, as far as that. Uh, so we have the more data or less. Yeah, let's just go with it. You guys can see what process I have to go through on all of these spreadsheets that I do to provide you guys with the information that, um, you know, we track. And you can see how this can be a little tedious at the times. I wish there was a script that I could write or something like that to automate this. And Mac, uh, if anybody knows of a script that could be done for this, uh, hit me up in the comments below because that would be a huge time saver for me. We're going to go through this relatively quickly here. This doesn't take too long. And I'm sorry to bore you guys with my operations here. Uh, but like I said, I came in a little late today because the kids had soccer practice. So I'm trying to get caught up here. So bear with me. We'll get through this. Let's see here. Did I go over that one? Yep. Okay. Uh, that one goes over here. Core. Core just recently um, has obviously been getting a little bit more traction with institutions as well. Uh, obviously from getting uh, out of bankruptcy here uh, in the last couple of months, which is obviously helping them a little bit here. And that would obviously be good for them in the long run. They're still far behind from where everybody else is. And then you can see obviously like Digihost, uh, DMG, D Digihost and DMG not having a lot of uh, institutions in them. So not a lot of love from those guys. Uh, and that's mainly because they're not growing that much, I think. That's what we're seeing with it all. Uh, which is kind of why, like I said before, why I'm going to be possibly or will be removing them from my future metrics and things like that just to kind of save time a little bit because the interest is just not there, unfortunately. 
uh, which is a shame because a lot of those companies are greatly run. They're just not uh, growing uh, as much as probably investors want them to grow. And for that reason, I think they'll still be prof profitable, right? Going forward, and they could still do really well as far as uh, percentage gains and multiple increases in stock price, especially with Bitcoin going up. Uh, but right now, we're just not seeing it from everybody as far as attention-wise, right? The attention is going to all the miners that are doing really well, that are performing well, that are growing, that have you know huge orders for machines, like we've seen with uh, Marathon, Riot, CleanSpark. All of those guys have put in purchase orders for machines to get them to uh, above 30x hash, right? And that's what's contributing to their growth there. Uh, with the smaller miners, we're getting you know 500 petahash, what maybe one exahash being installed or something like that at the very most, uh, and that's obviously contributing to the decrease in uh, you know shareholders looking to buy into them, unfortunately, uh, because the only way they can survive obviously is growing and uh increasing their hash rate and all those things but they're also gonna have a much harder time getting uh, atms and things like that but nonetheless here we go okay so i got that sorry for that we have the most data uh, most recent data here so here's what we got we let me see do i have this all correct down here month over month let's do this uh, sort descending month over month sort descending there we go okay so all my graphs should be good now except for institution ownership change uh month over month there we go okay all right now we're good all right so we have all the data up here right we can see here that the biggest gainers in uh, right now as far as well we'll look at the charts down here but i wanted to point out the uh, price targets right Biggest gainers here have been so far in the last six months. CleanSpark, their target price has increased by $16 for the high, by $10 on the average, and $4.50 by the low. That is comparable to what uh, Marathon got, right? $15 increase here over the last five, uh, six months for the high, $13.20 for the average, and $14 increase for the low on it. Um, so that's really good there. Then you got a couple here that got $4, $5 for Riot, and $5 for Sphere, which I think is the only analyst that's covering them there. Uh, what else do we have here? Bitforms was increased by $4 as well. Uh, Cypher was zero, and it actually went down on the average and the low. Core, who else did we have here that kind of went up nicely? Iris, 450, right? It went up as well. Um, so that's kind of where you're looking at there as far as uh, uh, analyst price targets for them over the last six months, how those have played out. Then you get the month over month here. Uh, big dip in uh, Cypher here, down $2. Uh, BitDigital down $1.70 here from the high. And then we had an increase in CleanSpark by $3. Uh, Digihost was up 2.25. Uh, who else was up here? Marathon was up $5. And uh, TerraWolf was down 50 cents on the high side of things. Okay. So going into the institutional ownership change over month over month, or six months, sorry. Uh, stronghold here, percentage-wise, came in number one, 15.76%, but they don't also have a lot of shares, right? So it doesn't take a lot to move that number. Digital came in at uh, number two spot, 13.41, and I think that is mainly because of the AI play that they have, right? Uh, and institutions are, I think, and investors are waiting for those results as far as how profitable that is. Hive went up 9.86%, Bitfarm 7.87%, uh, Core 7.5%, 7 Cypher 75 as well. And you got Terrell 6.9, Marathon 6.7, Riot 6.6, CleanSpark 5.3. And then when you look at the change in number of shares from six months ago, you can see here that CleanSpark came in at number one with 37.5 million shares, uh, followed by Riot at 36 and 35 million for BitFarms, 32 for TerraWolf, Mar Marathon for 32. And you can see everybody else down below here. So this is where the institutions are kind of plowing their money into right now, right? And that's kind of what I've been saying is possibly like the top five, seven miners or so are getting uh, a lot of uh, traction here. Okay, institution changed month over month here. We got Stronghold again. Um, being up 14%, followed by Sphere 4.6, right? Not a lot of shares out there. That's easy to do. Uh, some of the big ones that we saw a decrease in was, uh, the percentage-wise was 7.45 from Iris, and I think that could be also based on dilution. Same thing with TerraWolf. CleanSpark 5.26%, right? So there isn't, uh, maybe the institutions didn't change that many shares. Uh, when we look at it here, right, we actually see a different story here. So uh, share-wise, Iris had the most shares being added to them, 4.37 million, followed by Stronghold 1.5, B 
Bit Farms 0.8, Sphere 0.6, Cypher 0.4 million, CleanSpark 0.3 million, right? So we're still seeing additional uh, inflows from the institution side of things going into the miners, which is nice to see. Okay, so you can see all that data there. Going down here as far as the percentage change of institutions for the six months compared to the stock price change over the last six months, right? Biggest gainer here has been CleanSpark, 257% from six months ago, roughly, and institutions only increased by 5.32% in that. Uh, it's obviously pretty low there. The institutions doesn't look like they were driving it, uh, percentage-wise at least, but maybe they were driving it the share uh, share base-wise. Okay, then big decrease here was obviously Hot8, down 83%. Uh, stock price wise, and then 4.6% decrease in the institutional side of things. And then who else do we have? That was up quite nicely here. Terrible up 104%, right? 6.9% uh, from institutions. Then we got Marathon, 105% as well. 6.79 from institutions. Uh, where did institutions really plow their money into over the last six months? Well, it's kind of high. Uh, Bit Digital, right? Pretty close here. 13.41 from institutions. Stock's only up 13.85% on that one. Okay, so that's kind of the way things stack up there. Month over month, you can see again, Hut 8 being down 74% uh, on the stock price. Institutions being down 7.45% uh, on that one. Uh, Terrawolf up 29%, Cypher up 28%, right? So we're seeing much more uh, in those guys here over the last month or so. Uh, some of the big boys, Marathon was actually, institutions were down just a little bit here, but Share was down also 10.71%. Same thing for Bit Farms, Clean Spark down a little bit here. Riot uh, actually was down in price, but we had more institutions buy into them. All right, so you can kind of see all that. And that is how things have shaped up. So it's always good to take a look at where institutions are going into, especially when you look at the share based numbers, right? This is kind of what uh, usually other people follow as well. And surprisingly, like we've seen before, CleanSpark has outperformed a lot of these guys here over the last six months. Uh, but, you know, we're seeing a lot of inflows going into like Riot, Bit Farms, where we're not seeing that appreciation yet. So it seems more like maybe that's uh, driven by uh, regular investors compared to institutions buying into it. Uh, but we'll have to see, right? Or it could be that even though institutions are buying into them, investors are buying or selling out of them, right? That could be also the case there. Okay, but that is it. Let me know what you guys think of all this data here. It's obviously good to take a look at it, see where the smart money is possibly throwing their cash into. And then uh, are we in the same boat as them or are we in another little little dinghy, uh, you know, streaming up or trying to go upstream, I guess. Uh, but that's it. Um, so we'll see what happens later on this week. Obviously, Bitcoin coming down today with miners being down today. We got nine days left to go into the having event. It will be interesting. Uh, oh, and I did forget to mention, I did buy again today uh, some shares in BitFarms and in Iron today. So I forgot to mention that in the beginning of the video, but I did buy today, uh, which I try to buy at least once a week here, but as long as I have the cash to do it. Um, other than that, I'm going to continue to buy as long as we keep having the dips, because I don't know when those dips are going to end. And when they do end and I didn't buy, I'm going to wish I had bought at that point. So my strategy all along has been to dollar cost average in, buy the dips, and look at the longer time frame on all of these guys here. All right, so tomorrow we'll do a live stream. And then uh, what do we got going on Thursday? That's going to be a probably late video again because my boys have a soccer practice at that point as well. Uh, and then Friday, we'll see what happens as well. We'll get any updates from any of the miners. And then we'll also take a look at some other things as far as the quarterly results. We have to go over as far as which miners did the best on the quarterly results. We have to look at dilution that happened over the last quarter as well. Which miners diluted the most for what? So we have still a lot of things that I need to run numbers on and we'll get into that this week, next week, and possibly the following week as well, okay? All right, so again, thanks so much for coming in to watch this video. Um, always the, my little, uh, my little sales pitch here is through Patreon, right? This is uh, where I provide you guys with my spreadsheets. That's accessible through the link down below in the description for $8 a month. Um, you get 10% discount if you pay for the full year. And then you got also openings in the five five dollar range in the five dollar tier and the four dollar tier as well. Um, and then you have access to the Discord as well through that. And then I update this pretty much daily. Uh, pretty much, yeah. I think there's like ninety five percent of the time I'll update it daily. Uh, there might be a day where I don't do anything because there's no updates. All right, but that's it. Thank you so much again. Hit the like button, subscribe helps me out tremendously, and I'll see you guys in the next one.